Hi, and welcome to this edition of Inside Government. Today, we are privileged to have with us the Minister of Justice, the Honorable Raphael Bosman. Minister, thank you so much for taking time out of what I'm sure is a very busy day to sit and talk with us. It's my pleasure. Now, Minister, I don't think there's one person on St. Martin does, does, that does not know of you as the Minister of Justice. You've been very vocal in your ministry so far, so I don't think there's one person that cannot name who the Minister of Justice is. But many may not know of you as the man Raphael Bosman. So to start off, can you just tell us a little bit about your background, maybe where you were born, where you grew up, a little bit about your professional career, and how did you end up as the Minister of Justice? Okay, surely I can. Um, I was born in uh, Aruba. I was born in Aruba many moons ago. and. Um, my parents, uh, the late uh, Captain Gaston Bosman, and my mother, uh, the late Marta Bosman, uh, fine parents. Um, on Aruba, I grew up, went to uh, school in Aruba, uh, secondary school. After that, I went to the Netherlands to continue my education. Um, I first attended a teacher's training college. Uh, before going over to government administration. Uh, I think it was, yeah, the, it, in 1979, I started to work uh, on St. Martin for the island government back then. Uh, I worked in different departments. I had <laughs> many different departments that, um, where I worked um, and held different positions um, right up to 2000 13 actually when I went on, um, on, on pension. I continued however uh, on to work uh, as mediator uh, for St. Martin. I also work as mediator for the Bess Islands um, with responsibilities for Sabre and Stacia and substituting for Bonaire. Uh, during that period, the initial period, I um, uh, inscribed in the University of um, then Netherlands Antilles, the UNA. Uh, my hobby has always been law, and um, it was difficult combining it with the with the, uh, with the busy schedule and the job. Uh, I went up to my associates. I got my associates in um, in law, and um, continued uh, working. I mostly was involved in the field of labor. Um, for many years, um, and like I said, held uh, held different positions during the period of the island government, and now also since um, country Saint Martin, I'm still serving my country. And your transition from from that into the ministry, how did that happen? I it, it's it's a mix. Uh, something first of all, government is known to me. So I've uh, been a civil servant for more than 35 years. So uh, government operations, I know. Um, I was not familiar with the, with the inner workings of the Ministry of Justice, but have worked along um, in, 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 in my other uh, capacities with some of the, the departments in the Ministry of Justice, such as immigration, police, uh, etc. cetera. Um, so the, the, it was not a difficult transition. And I must say that, um, you know, there, 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 there's some good professionals in the Ministry of Justice and, um, and on my cabinet. So that, that transition um, went pretty okay. Minister, we are fast approaching a year that you have been in office. What has your experience been so far? A year already. <laughs> okay. You know, um, at the beginning, if you, if you, you know, if we, if we flash back at the beginning, and we came in, unfortunately, especially at the prison, it, it, it was a, a chaotic situation in the sense that some real bad things were happening. And um, also, uh, the Justice Ministry is, um, uh, had a number of uh, plans of approach, that we, uh, agreements that we entered into with the, with the Netherlands when we transferred um, uh, in 2010. Some of uh, two of those plans of approach for the police and the prison were not finalized, and there was a lot of pressure um, from all sides to make sure that um, 
we, we, we move ahead with these um, plans and to get the things materialized. Um, it, it, it has been hectic, especially the first six months. Um, there have been pressure from, 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 from all sides. Uh, there were a lot of issues uh, to, uh, to deal with. I think, like I said earlier, um, together with, you know, you, you, you have to surround yourself by good people. Okay, otherwise you're not going to get anything done. And um, uh, I think everybody, uh, the first six months, you know, <laughs> when, when, they, when they reached home, they were really tired. <laughs> so, but looking back now, we are in the eighth month now, looking back now, I'm, I'm pretty pleased as to um, where we are today. We are far, far from being where we need to be. But if the progress that we are making continue, this way, then, then I'm very optimistic that we will get the things done that need to get done. How is your relationship with the other ministers of the council? How often do you collaborate on any issues or special areas of, of interest? I know you have weekly council of ministers meetings, but outside of that, how often do you guys get together and speak? Um, as often as need be. I, I think um, this council of ministers uh, if, if, if something should go wrong, it would not be because we are not communicating with each other. Uh, the Council of Ministers meet uh, basically twice a week. One, on Tuesdays, we meet with the Council alone and, and, and we have um, lengthy meetings discussing the issues of the, of the people that need to be discussed. And on Thursdays, we usually meet with um, third parties if, if, if necessary. And, um, we have been we have been going full swing where that is concerned. Besides that, the individual ministers, depending on what um, we are working on, we meet with each other. Uh, I, for 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 instance, have a lot of uh, 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 communication with um, the minister of finance, the prime minister, minister uh, 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 of 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 VSR on certain r related issues. Um, Right now, as was noticeable in the last uh, press briefing, um, uh, the Minister of Romi, we are embarking on, on, on a, on a um, compliance um, um, policy where um, we'll be cooperating to make sure that uh, the rules and regulations are adhered to, not to harass people, mm -hmm. okay, but you know, we just have to comply with the rules and regulations. The Minister of, um, of education, if, if, if in the Ministry of Justice we are talking about um, uh, uh, um, prevention, you, you cannot think about prevention without thinking on the, 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 the youth and the consequences of that and I know the Minister of Education has that very close to her heart. So we will be collaborating on many different, um, different issues outside of that regular routine day to day things that we are responsible for. Now, your ministry, the Justice Ministry, as far as, in my opinion, the Finance Ministry, are the two ministries of the seven that are more, most closely connected, I would want to say, throughout the kingdom with your counterparts. Uh, there are several meetings that I know you attend and Minister Gibson attends with your counterparts in the rest of the kingdom. I know a few months ago there was a meeting on St. Martin with the four ministers of justice. How did that meeting go, in your opinion, and what are some of the the finer points that you were able to hammer out in that meeting? Yeah, uh, indeed, we we have um, that uh, meeting which is held twice uh, per year, where we get together the four ministers of justice of the kingdom, and we discuss uh, law enforcement, mm -hmm. all aspects of law enforcement, with the emphasis on cooperation. Um, we are living in a different world. Um, turn on CNN right now, they're talking about Spain. Um, the things that are happening in the, in, in, in the, in the world, you know, some people um, would say, hey, that's a sign. <laughs> um, but we are living in a different world and we can no longer do things alone. Um, we have to share information. We have to um, um, work together to mitigate the risk that we are facing and to keep our respective uh, people, our respective populations and visitors safe. Um, in doing so, 
you meet different challenges. Um, first of all, uh, when we meet, when I attend these meetings, um, while we are discussing the cooperation aspects of those meetings, you also want to safeguard your autonomy mm -hmm. on the issue that you're talking about. Because oftentimes, um, I, I can give a brief example, um, in the last uh, uh, meeting with the four ministers, we were working on a, uh, a regulation, it's a, it's, a, it's a joint regulation, and it's called the Onderlinge Regeling, which is the same for all mm -hmm. of the islands. And it, it dealt with uh, a privacy regulation when exchanging DNA profiles. You know, no law enforcement agency in, in today's age can really solve any cases if DNA is not involved. Um, and uh, w we made a regulation discussing how we would protect the privacy of the folks whose DNA we are exchanging among each other. And what, what is going to happen with, a, with the DNA profiles? How are they going to be stored, et cetera, et cetera. But that regulation also entailed a clause that says that should it be changed, then you would need uh, to change it, anything in it, you would need the permission of all of the countries. And I objected to that because it is something that St. Martin has the authority to change now if they want to change it. Mm -hmm. And cooperating with each other does not mean that you have to relinquish your authority. So um, in, in the discussions that, um, that, that ensued because of that objection, it was decided to omit that clause. So yes, we, if you make agreements, you're supposed to be able to trust each other to live up to the agreement. But you should not, as I said, you should not have to relinquish your autor autonomy to decide on a particular, um, a particular topic um, because you want to cooperate with each other. Now, how can you achieve that? That's only by sitting at the table with each other, discussing it, and giving your side of the argument and, and um, resolving the problem. The, the meeting, we, we, St. Martin, got um, um, uh, positive comments uh, after that meeting from all of the different countries. Uh, they found that the, 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 the meetings, the conference, was, were pretty uh, um, good organized and that we were able to discuss some serious topic in an amicable and respectable um, um, manner. Uh, the, the, my, my philosophy is, uh, you know, I, I can talk to anybody. I don't care where they come from, what they do. Once we approach each other um, with mutual respect, and, um, and, 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 and continue to deal with, uh, with each other with mutual respect. So, uh, yes, I'm, I'm very pleased how that, how that meeting went and, and also glad that my team, both those who organized the conference and uh, you guys participated also in that organization and, um, and those who, uh, like the SG, uh, the, the, the head of the legal department of the ministry, who took care of the content of the, of the conference. And we proved once again that if we put our heads together, work together, that we are just as good or even better than anybody else. Can you tell us what are, if any, were there similar areas of concern that all of the smaller islands share in terms of justice when it comes to that? Yeah, capacity is one. Capacity in the sense as a, as a uh, small island, um, you know, if you, if you look at a country like, like, like Holland, they have very specialized professions. Mm -hmm. So um, if, you, if you have someone working in a, in a, in a forensic lab, um, they would have a specific function in that lab. Um, because Holland has the capacity, they have the people, they have um, the, 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 the know-how because of scale. Mm -hmm. um, we, in our lab, we would have one person who may have to do three or four different speci specialities that um, Holland would have three or four different people doing. So uh, it, the, the, the notion that our people don't know uh, uh, what they're doing or cannot think, it's, 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 it's nonsense. As a matter of fact, um, we know more because, because um, we have to do more 
we don't have the luxury where we could have one person just specializing in this or specializing in that because of our scale. Um, the, the, the different islands have uh, uh, capacity problems. Um, and even with us, it is different. You, you even would have a situation um, where uh, um, the best islands, for instance, uh, we, we hear when we ask Curaçao or Aruba or the Netherlands to render support to us. We don't hear, for instance, when we render support to them. And um, especially like with the, with, the, with the best islands during their carnivals or major events or, or, or problematic um, um, issues. Uh, we, we, we assisted Curaçao, for instance, during their election period. Some of our, uh, uh, two or three of our experienced uh, police officers were based on their um, um, assisting them. So uh, the, 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 the capacity problem when there are issues happening that, that, uh, that are a peak, we, we, we all are confronted with, um, with, some, with some problems, and, um, but by helping each other, by having those agreements, we, we managed to get out of it. Minister, I would want to think, again, your, your ministry is quite unique in the services that you carry out. And of all the other ministries, yeah. yours is the one that is most closely connected to the people. Um, immigration, police, customs, those kinds of things. That, that's a, they have a day-to-day -day impact on the daily lives of St. Martiners and the persons that are visiting. We know that each ministry, of course, has their list of priorities and budget is always a concern. But what would you say are some of the top areas of priority for your ministry in terms of maybe personnel or equipment, some of the things that you're missing that you really would like to get to happen? Yeah. Uh, um, if if uh, budget uh, would allow, I would invest heavily in, um, in, in the human capital, in the... In the, in the um, um, not just in quantity, but in quality. You have good people working in the departments, be it police, customs, wherever. You have very good people working, um, doing the best they can. But in, in this area, as is this basically in, 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 in nearly any other professional area, um, they must have the opportunity to be able to upgrade themselves. And um, that is a, that is an area right now, for instance, that um, is lacking. But we, uh, especially with the police, in collaboration with Holland, they are um, there's an educational program that is put in place, and not only at the beginners level, but also at managerial level, um, uh, we would like to invest more in in in, in the human capital, also equipment. Um, like I said earlier, you know, crime fighting has become a technological, technological something and um, uh, we, we, we need equipment, you know, um, things like drones, we need, we need, we need people uh, also to operate them, etc. Um, and and other, other basic equipment. Um, one of the things that we are working on and, and, and just recently discussed with the, with the police is uh, the building in Cold Bay that we acquired um, some time ago to, to put it in use and, and there we would be having the, uh, a forensic lab and we want um, to have a, a, a state-of-the-art forensic lab um, in that building. So um, unfortunately we don't have the money to say okay good we're going to do it in one shot but we would do it in phases that we would have the proper equipment for um, the folks um, to be able to work with. Those, those are the two main areas that I would um, say, you know, I, I, I wish I had more money to invest in. I know, especially during the start of your tenure, there was some tension and you've been working very diligently on improving the relationship with the different union representatives on the island as it concerns to you, as it's in concern to your ministry. How is that relationship now? Have there been any improvements? I know there's, there's been an increased number of meetings 
and you've been really diligent in trying to get together and get the unions involved. So how is that process going? I, I, I am pleased with how the process is going and um, you know, I, I can understand the frustration of the unions and, 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 and the workers. Um, there are some issues that um, uh, pending um, since uh, 10, 10, 10. And, and um, the, the, what, what a lot of folks may not know with the, with the Justice Ministry, all of the other ministries went over smoothly from 10, 10, 10 to um, the, the country St. Martin. Um, most of, if not all, of the departments within the Justice Ministry were previously central government departments. The police, the customs, all of them were central government departments. And at the time of the transfer, things were not ready. There were issues with, with files not being turned over, etc., etc. Um, I know of that because from a different ministry, I've been involved in that changeover. So I know that there were a lot of issues. So it is not, I mean, no way trying to blame any predecessors, any, 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 any ministers before me, because they all were confronted with the same, um, with the same issues. So now these, these things um, have been pending for so long, then people start getting frustrated, start getting demotivated, and the unions, their patients kind of, you know, started to run out, if not already run out. So yes, there were some, some tense moments um, in the past. Um, as a person myself, um, I am a pro-union person. I believe that workers should organize themselves, and um, but for both sides, for management as a worker, it's 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 beneficial. So the approach was to be open, be transparent with the unions, talk to the unions, involve the unions, and let them see what you are doing. I mean, we are all human beings. You could want something to happen yesterday, but if you know it was not possible to happen yesterday, um, but there is a possibility that it can happen tomorrow, I don't see why you should sink the ship. I think you would work along and, and try to get it to happen tomorrow. And that was the approach, and I, I, I thank the unions in, in, in general, while being very critical, they're still very critical. Um, <laughs> uh, we arrange, we would have regular meetings. Once every two months, we, I would meet with them and, 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 and report the progress and discuss some of the issues at hand. And if need be, we would also meet prior to that. So if something come up uh, uh, before that, we would get together and meet. But we have a fix. Uh, a meeting uh, every two months. We just had um, um, one uh, not so long ago, and um, in reporting to to the unions, they uh, they were basically satisfied that at least we 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 are moving. So um, they are not satisfied that you know things are good, no, but they see that we are moving, and uh, by them cooperating, I think it would benefit everyone, and we will get where we need to go. Minister, you've been very vocal in terms of the progress committee with the progress that we've been making towards their recommendations and getting things on track with that. For those persons in the community that may not be familiar with um, the function of the progress committee, can you briefly explain what that committee does and also the improvements that have been happening in the past few months? Okay, yes. As I mentioned before, there was there, there are uh, plans of approach um, for, the, for the police and the prison. And um, it was agreed upon by all of the countries that a progress committee comprising representative from, all, from, from, from the islands. Um, in this case, it would, Aruba would not be involved because Aruba doesn't fall under those regulations. So Curacao, St. Martin and Holland um, had representatives um, on, the, on the committee and they would quarterly monitor the progress uh, made and give recommendations. Um, for, a, for a while, um, St. Martin did not have a, a, a representative on the committee. I think um, the last representative, if I'm not mistaken, was um, Minister Gibson in 2014, and St. Martin did not, after that, did not name anyone to the committee. Um, we thought 
that that was not a good something. Um, after all, uh, we have an opportunity to have someone there speaking on our behalf, um, and we are not putting that person there. So, you know, it's like we are not doing ourselves a favor. So that was one of the first things that I, I also promised the, 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 the committee that I would do was have a Samaritan representative. And, uh, you know, I'm proud to say that we appointed um, attorney Jason Rogers, who is one of our dynamic upcoming professionals, and I'm sure he would do a good job. He's not going to um, agree with us with wrongdoing, but I know um, um, he knows that he's representing St. Martin and on the committee, and, and, and if he has to be critical to help St. Martin, he will, because he's a professional, he will be objective. That is the confidence that I have. So I'm glad Jason is there um, now. And allow me to say this before we close. Um, uh, I cannot do an interview like this without giving a, a, a big, big word of thanks to the VECA S. Um, Major Rogers and his, his, his VECA S's have been an instrumental part in um, helping us resolve um, some of the personnel issues at the prison. And I also want to thank the Prime Minister because, as you know, the, the, the VKS falls under the Prime Minister and he has given his full cooperation um, to the Ministry of Justice so that the, we can count on the, on the, on the VKS. So a big thank you to them and um, I hope that, you know, we can continue that relationship. So those are, uh, are some of the main areas in the remaining months um, that we have for this year that I hope that we will be able to, to finalize and that um, uh, those accomplishments would reflect itself in the, the people in the community feeling themselves safer. If, if, if people uh, can move around feeling themselves pretty safe, mm -hmm. then I know we are, doing a, we are doing a good job. Minister, that's quite a list of accomplishments that, that you hope to get to, but Five I'm months. sure <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure with the way things have been progressing in your ministry since you started that it will be no problem. Once again, thank you for taking the time to do this interview. That's, this has been this edition of Inside Government. We thank you for watching. I'm your host, Giselle York, and we'll see you next time.